All right. I call this December 5th, 2022 meeting of the Lake Havasu City Parks and Recreation Advisory Board to order. Uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, roll call. Sherry Butler. Here. There you go. <laughs> Kyler Cox. Here. Shannon Murray. Here. Ashley Pasquale. Here. Alex Ross. Here. Philip Shannon is excused. Todd Taylor. Here. Alexis Wolf. Here. Natalie Strader. Here. And Michelle Lynn. Here. Alrighty. Uh, we'll start with the call to the public. We will now have an open call to the public for citizens wishing to address the board on issues within the jurisdiction of the board. Your comments must be limited to three minutes or less. If you wish to address an item already on today's agenda, you should wait until that item is announced for a public hearing. At the conclusion of the open call to the public, individual members of the board may respond to criticism made by those who address the board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, board members cannot discuss or take legal action on matters not already on the agenda. Is there anybody in the public that would like to address the board? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to approval of the October 24th, 2022 meeting minutes. Looking for a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the October 24th, 2022 meeting minutes. Can I say something? My name's spelled wrong, so I don't know if that matters in the minutes. We will get those corrected. <laughs> Having to share some technology over there. You guys are doing great. All right, we do have a motion for approval with uh, maybe with a correction of a name spelling. Do we have a second? I move to second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All righty. Uh, item 6.1, uh, Communications Announcement Staff Report. Director Keene. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our second annual Sledding with Santa event will take place at the Patrick Tunnell Memorial Skate Park on December 16th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Winter Break Camp will be held at Jamaica Elementary School December 27th through the 30th and again January 3rd through January 6th from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Registration will begin on December 6th at 8 a.m. online or in person at the Aquatic Center. We're still searching for basketball volunteers in order to uh, fill the number of coaches that, that we'll need to run that program. So if anybody is interested in volunteering, please contact the Aquatic Center or go online at www.lhcaz.gov. In the aquatics area, the annual pool maintenance shutdown will continue through December 11th. Currently, the pool is scheduled to reopen on December 12th. We'll have an after-school program swim on December 15th. We're offering a new lifeguard class for new staff members on December 16th through the 18th. During the holidays, we'll have modified hours at the pool. From 12 to 4 p.m., there'll be open swim on December 24th, 26th, 31st, January 2nd. And from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. on December 27th, 29th, January 3rd, and January 5th. Exercise classes will begin for the winter session on January 3rd, with Learn to Swim classes beginning on January 9th. We're offering a new adult snorkeling program beginning January 10th. We'll also have a welcome back winter visitors potluck on January 11th. A new adult kayaking class will begin on January 12th. And water safety instructor training for our staff uh, to become certified to teach swim lessons January 13th through 15th. And a new adult stand up paddleboard class will begin on January 19th. In the community center, we'll, Lake Havasu High School Student Council movie night will be held on December 6th. 
The annual community Christmas dinner will be on December 9th. Lifeline screening on December 14th. Lake Havasu High School Educational Tour Group has their annual pasta dinner December 17th. A new event will be Pancakes with Mrs. Claus held on December 18th. The Arizona Collectible and Firearm Show December 31st and January 1st. By Talent will be having a blood drive January 9th through the 12th. And then our concert series will begin with an Eagles tribute concert January 13th. Eastern Star Bunko, January 16th, another Elvis tribute concert on January 20th, and Billy Joel and Elton John tribute concert on January 21st. Out in the parks, we'll have the Pickleball Jingle at Dick Sant Park on December 8th. Havasu Skates will be doing an event at the Sarah Park Skate Rink December 10th. The first annual Bearcat Pool, um, Sponsored by the police department and uh, Special Olympics will be at Rotary Park on December 17th. And a menorah lighting under the bridge, under the London Bridge, will take place December 18th. Mr. Chair, that concludes my staff report. And with that, I'll take any questions. Great. A lot of stuff going on. Questions, comments for the director? Go ahead. Um, no, I've just been seeing on social media the uh, advertisements for the kayaking and some of the new programs, and I think that's really exciting and um, looking forward. Hopefully you guys will, will get a good turnout and, and see how that goes. So thank you so much for that. Great, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Um, I just have a couple questions. What The adult snorkeling, what is what program is that? What does that entail? Um, Really just some introduction to how to snorkel, how to clear your mask, um, just get people used to the, the concept of snorkeling and um, not panicking uh, when their their face is underwater and, and the snorkel in and um, being able to, to continue to, to breathe. Awesome. And then the for like the kayaking and the paddle boarding and things like that, is that something that the city is going to continue hosting or is that just... Yes, so we had a couple of staff members go through a certification class with Arizona Game and Fish, uh, and so they're going to um, have a kind of a joint effort there to uh, utilize their equipment and um, hopefully transition out into the lake and, and be able to um, offer some of those, those introductions and, and get more people interested in the program. Awesome. Um, and then... Sorry, just the last question I had was the pancakes with Mrs. Claus. I, again, I'm not familiar with that. I was just curious. Yeah, that's a new event uh, that we're trying out on December 18th. Um, there will be a arts and crafts. Um, we'll cook some pancakes uh, for, the, for the kids, and Mrs. Claus will be walking around. Awesome. Great. Go ahead. I do you have a question? Yeah, Thank go ahead. Um, Mr. Keene, with the winter break camp, What's the capacity? How many kids can that? 100. 100. And about how many children are in the after school program currently? About 400. 400. So a quarter of them, do you have space for that? And what's yes. the charge for those two weeks? Uh, $41 for the first child and 32 for any additional children. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Again, I just, uh, I'd just i say thank you to you and your staff. I mean, again, another full director's report, and it's awesome to see it. Again, this these events that we're doing, you know, the kayaking, the, the, the snorkeling, it, it just we live on the lake. So it's great to see the city stepping up and, and really doing the things that matter for our citizens. And again, great job. You guys have been killing it, and it's very obvious out there. So thank you. All right. We will move on to our public hearings. Start with item 7.1, discussion of the downtown Catalyst project update. Director Keene. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to have a lot more information for you tonight. Um, we have received the 90% uh, documents. Uh, I did try to email them out to everybody. Uh, I know I got at least one back that the, the email wouldn't accept it because it is such a, a large file. So I'll be um, getting that person a a copy of it uh, in a different manner. 
Uh, we were hoping to be able to also with that have the pricing estimates, uh, but there has been a slight delay in that process of obtaining those uh, estimates. So right now those uh, 90% documents are being reviewed by set of several different city uh, departments, including the, the developmental services, our engineering department, um, obviously our, our parks department um, as well. So those, uh, those will be reviewed. Any comments will get back to DIG. Um, once we get the pricing estimates, we'll go through that and see what, you know, what things, uh, look like if reasonable cost, if there's things that we might be able to do, uh, in house cheaper, we'll pull those from the project. Uh, and then that information will go to a council presentation. We are hoping to have that in early January with the delay in the holidays. I'm not exactly sure if that's going to fit in that time schedule of early January. Um, but as soon as that uh, is available, we'll, um, we'll put it on an agenda for Dig Studios to come out to do the presentation and discuss the, um, the price estimates. Um, that kind of completes where the project stands right now. So with that, I'll take any questions. All right, questions for the director? I may have asked this last time too, um, but just want to check in terms of, and I don't expect you to answer for a dig or anything, um, but the pricing seems like kind of a big component um, to be able to move forward. And I know things take time, but um, is there, have they given a reason why there's no pricing yet? Or? So there's a third party company that does the, the pricing for them. So we're working through our professional services agreement with that, with that company. And yes, I agree 100%. Pricing is the, the next big component of this. Uh, and that's why we're putting off the presentation to council until we receive that information. The, the presentation um, isn't complete without that information. And I totally understand you can't speak for them or anything, but is that a normal thing, a third party, uh, third company party uh, doing the pricing or is that something? Yes, uh, there's companies out there that that is their sole function is to go through once plans are designed and developed uh, to go through and cost estimate every item out of that um, from what you know, how many truckloads of dirt it's going to take to remove, to add um, every nut and bolt screw. And that's their sole purpose uh, of their existence is just to go through each project and um, and identify those price costs. Sorry, I have another question about that. So if, let's say, whoops, we move forward with things, um, if we negotiate price or negotiate, will we be negotiating with DIG or will that third party also be part of the... So these would just be est cost estimates that they'll present in front of council. At that time, council will decide um, if we want to move forward with the project, if that is determined, then we would need to go, all this information would need to go out to bid. Um, and, and then we'll actually get the, the, the numbers um, from a bid and, and work through that process. All right, any other questions? If their pricing does go over, are we able to use more? Because I know there was original, um, and I'm probably gonna butcher like the language, but there was like an original grant that we received, right? Are we able to tap into more of that grant or has that money already been allocated? So the original um, funding was through an ABC competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so that dollar figure is set. Okay. Um, we are preparing to apply for a grant through Arizona um, State Parks and Trails, uh, their Heritage Fund grants, mm -hmm. which uh, could possibly um, bring in up to a million dollars additional for the project that would not have to then come out of the general fund. Um, that is a competitive grant. So we're waiting for all this information to be able to apply for that grant as well, but definitely looking at some alternative funding sources um, in addition to the ABC dollars, uh, therefore limiting the amount of money that would need to come from the general fund. Did you say an additional million? Was that yes, the, the Heritage Fund grant is up to a million dollars. So is that matching money or is that? It is a 50% match and we can use the ABC dollars um, as oh. the match for that. Okay, thank you. Um, I know you said that with the delay of the pricing comes the delay of presenting the plans to council. 
But do you have an estimate of when, um, like the possible date would be, or just an idea of when we can present everything to council? We were hoping for early January. Um, again, with the holiday, I think that'll probably get thrown off a little bit. So um, I still hope late January, if not from the first meeting of February. Okay, thank you. Um, just to piggyback off her question, um, are we, it, is Dig Studios going to present anything to us or are they going to let, have you do it? Um, they'll have me do it. Uh, Dig, Dig Studios has one more, um, it, as far as their contract, uh, has one more presentation to give and that's the one to council. Okay. Um, so are we, is, are we going to get the presentation to this board prior to the council getting it? That kind of all really depends on timing. Okay. Um, so you'll either get it right before or right after. <laughs> All right. Um, that answered those questions. I have a couple, but if anybody else has any other questions. Yeah, on the grant, what's the timetable on that? Do they have a deadline? So um, Arizona State Parks and Trails grants are, are really kind of rolling. Um, they meet quarterly as a board to uh, award funding. So the next... They have a meeting in December, so the next one, I believe, is in March to April time frame okay. um, when they would meet and be able to award. And we writing that grant application in-house, or did we? Yes. Did, through your department? or um, As well as our, our grants okay. uh, area. Thanks. These are all great questions. Anybody else have anything? Let's keep this conversation up. Um, just a couple of things I want to talk about that, um, I observed, you know, I, obviously this is still one of those things to where we don't, we don't know where the future really is going to guide us for this. Um, so there was a couple of events that I attended that were actually down here or down at that, uh, parcel. And, you know, I, I talked to, again, took the time and, and the, uh, initiative that one of the other board members that they did as well. And, and I kind of talked to a couple of people and just thought of, you know, again, same thing. What, what's your thoughts, just general idea. And, you know, the one event was there was a food truck event that was down there and, and that place was packed like the entire time. Um, and I, I just standing in line getting some food. I just talked to the people in front of me, behind me. And, um, they were, I, I would say a hundred percent of the people I talked to said they wanted to continue to be in event space. Um, so I just thought that was interesting to note. There wasn't, you know, I, I talked about a couple of the other options and things like that. And, and there was, like I said, a, a, a lot that were very adamantly like, we want this to be an event space, nothing more. Um, you know, maybe a, a park style event space, you know, was their idea. But, you know, when some things got brought up of multi-use areas um, for you know, parking and things like that, um, not a very pleasant uh, answer when I floated that idea. Um, same thing, the toy run, uh, the motorcycle toy run, the River Riders toy run was down there uh, this weekend. Again, it was a, a, you know, Main Street was packed, great event, um, you know, a, a brought a lot of a lot of people down to those businesses. A lot of businesses I noticed flourished from it, opened early, um, things like that. Um, but I did, I was inside one business um, getting something from that business and, and they actually locked the front door. Um, they did not want the people to come in because the people were getting off their motorcycles and walking and utilizing the restroom. Um, without providing business to the to the actual business themselves. So, um, you know, I took the opportunity to kind of speak to a couple of the employees and they said that, you know, they they kind of agree with the thought process, but their biggest concern was the bathroom. You know, their the businesses said, you know, that they want to see that bathroom. So again, just a couple of things that I talked to, or a couple of people I talked to, I figured I'd pass on that message. So does anybody else have anything? Again, now's the time, especially if we uh if we miss out on the opportunity to speak before this presentation or see the presentation before council? No, I, I kind of hear what they're saying. I mean, it's to have a real open plan so that it's still very usable for multiple types of events is important. You know, to, to make too many, you know, chop it up too much would be kind of tragic. But the bathrooms are a key. Go ahead. Yes, uh, you're insisting that we make some comments. <laughs> so I would commenting. say it's just pressuring <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, but I thought we were going to get uh, some money information tonight coming over. Um, but I think we have to keep in mind 
we meaning uh, general public in this town, um, we've been using that property, like you said, you've been to two events there recently. And um, in my mind, all we really need are some bleachers and bathrooms. <laughs> Seriously, that is what's missing. And so I'm sure hoping that I realize this whole catalyst project is also going to help give some shade. But let's face it, that's a very difficult thing to do in Lake Havasu, Arizona. So um, people are generally going out to an outdoor event. They're expecting to be in the sun. So they're preparing themselves with hats and sunscreen and they're used to that. But what we don't have there, we do not have bathrooms and we don't have a place to sit. Now, how much could that cost, folks? Well, That's where I'm at. Thank you. I, um, I hear you on the, the place to sit part, but I think that should be a portable unit, you know, like uh, similar to what the Jet Ski World Finals, Jim Russell's purchased the portable bleachers. That, I think, would be a really great thing if the city would have one of those also. Because if you put permanent anything permanent in that space – could hamper the use of it for, uh, you know, multiple types of events. So, I mean, I'd almost like to see the a large bathroom facility up front towards the, towards the streets and maybe some walkways or some, you know, but not too much permanent structure in the middle. I could see the, I hear the shade, but the shade structures could really mess up the flow for event producers. I know one. <laughs> And I think those are great comments, and I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that 90%, but I, I, it, it, for the most part, is kind of up to par with, with your comments. It's pretty open. That bathroom that is, you know, forefront on, on that McCulloch side. And you know, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, you know, that bathroom is forefront because I think that was an echoed issue. We want that bathroom close to the street. Um, and the shade, you know, again, it's, it's one of those things to where I don't think it necessarily would impede, but, you know, it's there for sure, so. And, and part of that shade structure is the infrastructure to... Uh, electricity for for these events. A lot of the, what we hear from the vending side is uh, is power. Uh, that a lot of these booths would like electrical. Um, so that's an infrastructure piece um, that that has to be incorporated in some way, shape, or form. Whether that through the through the walkway um, as well as through the the shade structure. Um, the shade structure also provides um, the shade. Maybe not during an event. But remember, we're trying to make this a catalyst site where people would come down uh, on a daily basis. Um, so there is that portion of the facility as well where we're hoping somebody will go across to the cause and get, grab a cup of coffee and, you know, and, and come and sit out in that setting uh, during, during a regular you know, business day or um, the PED is opening their, their facility right behind it. It might be a good opportunity for a, a small business owner to come over and, you know, and have that meeting outside. Uh, so that so that part of the catalyst is, is also there um, that would require I think a little bit more shade than maybe just a regular event. Sure, and and again to just to go back to the events that you know, we're down there, you know, I think that that word catalyst is a great a great definition of of what the future potential is is you know for that food truck event. I mean, there was like I said, there was crazy amounts of people there and. A handful of them I talked to, they left right there and they went to a couple of the places um, and, you know, bought some adult beverages and things like that. And, and you know, it, it was the catalyst to that area. Again, talking, you know, the Veterans Day, or I'm sorry, the uh, um, Rods and Relics parade that they did. Um, so they have, the, you know, the Rods and Relics went on all weekend and then Sunday they did the parade. I, I, I know there was a handful of businesses down there, food, business, food businesses and, and uh, you know, bars and stuff like that that actually opened earlier than they normally would just to kind of be part of that event. There was, you know, a handful of people up on that parcel. Um, and then same thing for for the uh, the toy run. Again, it, it really, the catalyst is there, you know, so I, I definitely saw it um, for sure. So go ahead. 
Oh, well, um, excuse me, Chairperson Cox, I want to thank you for doing the legwork and, and talking to people. I think that's awesome and great. Um, you know, I know we here are not elected officials with Councilwoman Lynn, um, the exception of, of that, but um, I think in any form of government, you know, we're representatives and it's good to know where the people stand. Um, I, I wish more people would be involved, more people would come, more people would talk, but things are busy, things are tough out there. But I think, um, you know, as much as we can, going back to the voice of the people, you know, I tend to agree, I'm not a, a big frill and, and thing. I'm, I'm probably more fiscally conservative and stuff. But again, this ball was rolling well before I sat here at this table. So what's the will of the people? What what do the people want? Um, and, and you just hope it, it's the legitimate will of the people. So I agree 100%. And that's, you know, again, I took that note from from your book, that page from your book for sure. With let's let's ask the people. And, and you know, I, again, my, my response that I've been getting has been overwhelming. What's the timeline like once they once we do get the 90% doc, or the documents back it goes to council if it's approved what are we I mean how long will it take them to do you have any idea um, no that, that's a tough one if they do give the direction to move forward um, traditionally bids are out on the street for 45 to 60 days um, we wouldn't look to start construction a, a, at least until uh, the next fiscal year And then, sorry, once they do start construction, is that space, like I'm just thinking of all these events that we've had now for like the last couple of months, like are there events that we're going to have to potentially look at moving temporarily just until that construction space is finished? Have we had that discussion yet? We haven't. Uh, that would all go into the timing of um, and discussion with the contractor that was awarded the bid uh, and what that timing would look like. Um, we ourselves wouldn't start a project that we knew was going to um, impact a lot of um, the events. Um, so therefore, you know, summertime is probably our most ideal time to do that construction. Um, but we'll have to work through, uh, through what that looks like. Any other questions, comments? Okay, this is a public hearing. So um, I would like to open the public hearing for uh, item 7.1. Any, from, anybody from the public that would like to address the board in reference to this item? <laughs> All right. Still come up and talk. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Oh, he's coming up. See, I'm pressuring everybody today to get comments. Uh, Doug Carr. Uh, it's a great project. Uh, we definitely need bathrooms. I don't know how many stalls are involved in that. Three and three, four and four. Uh, hopefully it's not the trailer design, but uh, not my pick. Uh, and some shade structures up there, just the design of it was nice and uh, a place for people to go and sit just during the afternoon or whatever. You know, grab a burger, go over there and sit. Some people that work downtown can go over there for their lunch hour, and uh, it will be a good project. But, you know, you probably won't be able to see it for about a year and a half, the way the city does it. But uh, hopefully uh, it'll be a good project. And uh, some of the vendors, I mean, maybe they should help pay for some of this uh, project too. It's great to have a grant, but uh, the... Chamber could come up with some money like Pickleball has uh, to get their project done. So, because I know it's going to go over what everybody really thinks it's going to be. So, hold on to your hat when you see that number. Thank you. Great comments. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Any final discussion or thoughts? Okay. We will move on to item 7.2, discussion of the Aquatic Center HVAC project update. Director Keen. Thank you. So this project is moving along very well uh, over the last two weeks. Um, most of the demo work has been completed. The old heating units uh, are off the roof. Uh, the old All the old locker room duct work has been removed. Um, several holes were cut in the ceiling. Uh, for all the new steel and support systems to be put in place to hold the new units. 
Uh, the new ductwork has been installed in the locker rooms and up to the top of the slide. For any of you that ever have ever been up in that area um, at the start of the slide in the summertime, there is zero ventilation up there. Uh, so there is a new duct coming off of the uh, main line uh, that will provide some air uh, circulation and cooling up there. Uh, the new energy efficient windows are being installed and the temporary heating units have been uh, moved to the roof and are waiting to be hooked up. Um, we're really, really, really hoping uh, that they will be hooked up this week. Uh, that way we can reopen the pool on the 12th uh, to have some heat in the pool area as well as the locker rooms. Um, so that, that project is, is moving along very well. Again, after this week, we will see a slowdown in the project. Um, they, they'll continue to uh, replace, I'm sorry, rebuild a new chemical room in the, uh, in the pump room area. Um, again, that won't be real vi visual, um, but the next phase of the project really starts when the new units arrive, and those are uh, many, many weeks out. When the project started, we were, they were saying in the range of 30 weeks. Um, so we, we took the opportunity to do all this prep work while we were, had the opportunity during the pool closure, knowing that we will stop um, for a little while until those units come in uh, and be able to then put them on the roof. Um, but all the support structure is now in place and um, we'll be awaiting those units. So uh, it's been a... Um, a little bit of a challenge to work in the building <laughs> while it's been under construction, um, but we, we've made it through and uh, it's been a very, very productive uh, two and a half weeks and, and look forward to wrapping up this phase of that project. Great update. Thank you. Any questions or comments for the director? Okay. Um, again, I would just touch and say, you know, that it's one of those things where, you know, people see this uh, 3.1 million price tag and, you know, I don't think we do ourselves justice by just labeling it the HVAC project update, right? I, I think it's a lot more than that. So it's good to hear about the energy efficient windows and the heating, the cooling. And I'm sure that that lifeguard that's up at the top of the slide is going to appreciate that extra ventilation. So um, again, you know, I, I hear a lot of people when we talk about these items and stuff, they, they question, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money for air conditioners. But there's a lot more to it, and it's much needed. So I think that'll be a great, great update and something that's been much needed to that aquatic center for sure for quite some time. So, Okay, this is a public hearing. Would anybody like to address the board on item 7.2? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Any final thoughts or discussion on this item? All righty. And we will move on to item 7.3, discussion of the pickleball court project update. Director King. So uh, since our last meeting, there has been a construction delay uh, in this project. There has been a lot of work completed. Um, the fence posts have been installed. The post tension concrete has been poured. Um, while we're waiting for that post tension concrete to cure um, before they can apply the surface coating on that, that's that anti, the anti-slip, much like a tennis court, um, where it's anti-slip and all the markings will be on that. Um, while we're waiting for that to cure, um, it needs to cure approximately 28 days. Um, they'll be doing other work, including the fine grading, um, paving the sidewalks, and um, installing the fencing uh, around the, the courts. Um, so the, there was a delay. Um, this project was set to be completed in mid-December. Um, it's looking like more mid January to late uh, late January. There was a delay in receiving the fence posts um, since our last meeting, um, but they have come in. They are installed, um, and the concrete is poured around them now. So um, the fencing will, will go up in the next two weeks, and um, we're looking to hopefully start the um, the court surfacing. Uh, the end of the month or the first of January. Um, some of that does rely on the weather, so it does need to be warm enough for that coating to adhere to the concrete. So um, we just have to keep that in mind as well uh, during that process. But um, but the project is uh, moving forward. Uh, now we can actually see work out there um, and sticks up as far as for the fencing and the concrete poured. Um, so that concludes my presentation on the pickleball boards. Great, great update as always. Questions or comments for the director? 
Yeah, go ahead. Um, Mr. Keene, is there, so the other, I'm asking, I'm going to ask questions about that other access to pickleball courts and other parks, because all I know about, and I wonder if it still exists, is sometimes some use of the basketball court, sorry, the basketball court at, I always want to call it State Beach, Lund 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 Ridge Beach, um, is that so used part of the time for pickleball? Yes, um, that space sometimes in the mornings, pickleball players will bring their own nets down and, and set up on the basketball court there oh, okay. um, to play. It's nothing that we have structured, um, just while those courts are not being used um, as kids are in school or um, you know, adults are working, uh, as opposed to those courts just sitting empty, um, they are a good place for additional pickleball to be played. But they bring their own equipment yes, the they net do. and everything. Mm -hmm. And is that the only other court uh, we do offer uh, pickleball in inside the aquatic center okay uh, other than that there are some private um, groups different churches that uh, offer pickleball but those are the only city run um, facilities and the um, when it's being used in the community center is that parks and rec equipment that's set up yes it is okay Okay, that's all. That and there is a fee that they pay, the, the oh. open gym. The, um, it's $3 a, a person to, to play. And it's just first come, first serve, or is there a sign up for that? Um, it's first serve, first come, first serve to get into the gym, and then there's a system in place of kind of how they Rotate circulate through, through uh, oh, okay. who gets to play. Okay, great. And is everyone bringing their own personal equipment like paddles and balls and all that the majority do um, we do have a couple paddles um, that people can can utilize as well but the majority of players do bring their own okay and it's three dollars per person for uh it's a two hour time frame two hours. three hours sorry three hours. three hours okay okay are there you don't have to answer this if it's too far off the agenda topic just that makes me wonder about other sports times at the community center. Is there a basketball open gym and things like that? Yes, we do have a okay. open gym basketball as well um, that we run a couple. Well, depending on on the scheduling and events, um, and and we do have a youth uh, a basketball that that we're trying out uh, once a month, um, as well as. Um, we offer volleyball uh, comes in and rents the gym quite a bit too. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Uh, if anybody would like to address the board on item 7.3. Uh, again, Doug Carr. So how many have gone up and seen Dick Samp Park? Raise your hands. One, two. Are you, are you talking about three, recently since four, this project's or, been? Or seen the pickleball course up at Dick Samp Park. Yeah. So that should be part of this committee. Because uh, it's one of the busiest parks the Lake Havasu has on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes there's over a hundred people up there playing, uh, and then basket. I mean, baseball this weekend must have had like a thousand people up there. Uh, it was it was packed, uh, and then we were playing pickleball and it was packed, and everybody got along great. And people from that were playing little league baseball come over and watched, and it was a good time. Uh, and uh, so yeah, uh, it's amazing what. Little you get for $400,000, but we're going to get four more courts. Uh, and then hopefully by the end of January, they'll be finished and uh, there'll be some more work that needs to be done. Uh, and this association will be putting money towards uh, wind slats and shade structures and maybe more concrete. Uh, we do in fundraiser. The fundraiser tomorrow is, is to help pay for some of these projects and lights. Uh, and uh, I don't know if we have any idea about lights yet up there. I don't know, Mike, is there any kind of idea about that? 
Um, it was placed in the budget last year and was removed. We will place it in the budget again for this coming year. So it'll be put in the CIP budget, you think, for maybe February, March? Uh, it, it will be in the operational budget. Yes. Oh, okay. So at least it'll be, we'll have some money for lights, uh, which I've been working on for years. And hopefully the association, you know, has kind of set aside 50000 for lights, but it's supposed to be upwards of 100000 So uh, hopefully we can get that in and a lot of the locals can play and everybody else can come up and play. And we do give uh, uh, lessons. Uh, and sometimes it's a little hard if you're still working uh, to get up there during the afternoons to take these lessons and uh, show up. But it's a very friendly crowd up there. So come on up. What are the prime pickleball hours that we come up and watch you guys? Uh, the prime are 7 till 12. At night? No, the during morning. the day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 7 to 12. It, morning people. Uh, but there's a... And then today there was a... A couple round robins are going on, and there was, uh, you know, 40 more people there this afternoon. Uh, you know, those were, you know, scheduled, uh, organized uh, fundraising again uh, for the association. Uh, and then we do this uh, actually every week now that the snowbirds are back. We're doing uh, stuff on Mondays and Tuesday afternoons and Thursdays and uh uh, but yeah, please come on up. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the end of Avalon. So way up on the outskirts, uh, the northeast corner of the city. Uh, it's got two beautiful little league baseball diamonds and, and scheduled for a couple more, you know, someday. Maybe soccer, I think, would be better, but, uh, that's my thought. Any other question? Kyler? Okay. Sherry? Yes, I do. Um, so in that, you mentioned a fundraiser tomorrow. I'm sorry. Uh, a pick, pickleball jingle. Uh, we have a fundraiser. Actually, we, we fundraise for a family here in town tomorrow it is what that this one's for. Oh, it's and, and for we did a, a, a turkey trot. Uh, for, uh, for the food bank. But then, uh, some of these other fundraisers are for the associations to donate, you know, uh, to Dick Sam Park up there. Yeah. But yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Tomorrow's for a family. Uh, we pick one family. I'm not in charge of that. So I'm not exactly know how that works, but it's a fundraiser for a family in need here in Lake Havasu. Uh, and I think there's, Maybe 50 people playing tomorrow. So. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, Dick Samp was a very good friend and a very good friend of Lake Havasu. City. You know, I didn't know him because I only <laughs> been here since 2009. So, uh, and it is actually the old, uh, landfill and they put the pickleball courts on top of the landfill because they, you know, you couldn't put grass there because of the landfill underneath. So. Uh, we are playing on top of the landfill. I'm sure he doesn't care. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I would just say, uh, just a point of note here for you, Mr. Carr. Not only I, I was, I'm very active in the baseball and and football uh, sports scene here with well, the youth. Well, that's why you're here, right? You know, because you're you yeah, were but one of that. I will uh, tell you, obviously, when I came into this, pickleball was a big topic. So not only did I go look at the courts, I actually went and played. Good. Um, yeah. And I was exhausted and sore for about four days after. So um, we appreciate we appreciate what the association is doing. Again, you guys, you know, we, we I say this every time we talk about it. The the fact that we have a person in this in this community that's willing to donate the amount of money that we did. What are we upwards of four hundred thousand dollars total? More than that, I think. Correct. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's outstanding. That shows that you know the citizens of this community really get together and, and want something great. So. Keep doing what you guys are doing. We appreciate it, and all it's doing is better. And then when this is all said and done, you know, it'll be close to 700000 that the association and its members have donated to the city to do this. And it's been a long stretch. And uh, But, uh, you know, we have a new chief of police, 
And he's actually a darn good pickleball player. That's so, what I've heard. So he comes up on the weekend on his spare time and plays. <laughs> and uh, so, sorry, Troy, I threw you under the bus. No, that's okay. No, you're good. Yeah, thank you. And we appreciate everything okay. you guys are doing. Really. Thank you. Truly do. I would just like to clarify a statement that I, I made there. Um, we will put a budget request in going for next year. That does not necessarily mean it will make it into the budget. Um, that is looked at by the city manager first and then city council themselves. Great point. All right. Anybody else from the public that would like to address the board in reference to this item? All right. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on this item. Any final comments or discussion on the, this item? 7.3. All right. We will move on to future discussion items. Would anybody like to add any uh, items to future meetings? Yes. Go ahead. I uh, was speaking with Brian Camino from. See your mic on, by the way. I know. Are you guys still sharing? Sorry. There we go. I've been speaking with Brian Pino with California Skate Parks. They've sent me a proposal for doing maintenance on the upper skate park area, which is going to include some painting the coping, staining areas, crack repair and spalding repair. Um, and they're also willing to work with the city and teach the city maintenance on how to do the uh, a repair on where the joints come together and such and the proper techniques of you doing the caulking because that's something that has to be done fairly common and it's a very costly project to have California skate parks to come in. So I think it's pretty nice of them to be willing to show the city workers how to do it themselves and save the city some money. So I'll uh, send you that proposal and uh, I'd like to talk about that in depth next meeting. Sure. Uh, so I'll just need a second on that. I'll second that. Already. I'd like to discuss that too. Perfect. Did you need anything else for that director Keen? Are you good? Just the proposal. Already. Gotcha. Any other items? Anybody would like to try add or try to get added to a future agenda? Yes, yeah, so I'd like to recognize that I think Lake Havasu has some of the best park facilities in the state that are somewhat possibly underutilized in terms of our revenue opportunities. So I would like to put on uh, the agenda for future discussion the gathering of some input from the board and the community at large as to some ideas. Because everything, when we come down to, we need lights, we need this, we need, it's all about money. And, and I think the parks can generate more revenue than we currently are through several activities. And I'd like to hear from the community as to what they think might or might not work. So if we put that on the Great. future discussion. And I'll just need a second for that. I'll second that too. Already. You got anything else? Okay. What else? Got some more? Let's keep it up. All right. Looks like nothing further. Uh, next item is future meetings. Okay. Future meeting dates will be January 23rd and February 27th. Is that February 22nd? 27th. 27th? Yeah. Okay. Anything further? All right. I will, since we won't see everybody, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year, and thanks for doing everything you guys all do. This meeting's adjourned.